rug we haven't seen more than 20 years. And I think that's generating a fair degree of anxiety and unhappiness among voters. But also I think mistakes in the calibre of Australian political leadership as well, of which Tony Abbott certainly made a few, and of which the previous Labor government also made um, serious mistakes as well. Let's talk about, you, you said calibre, so let's talk about that for a moment in regard to Malcolm Turnbull, the new Prime Minister. He has said that he will make the economy his priority. Do you expect him to deliver on all the counts that Australians are concerned about? I think he'll certainly try to do so, and I think he'll very much trade perhaps on his reputation as a very successful business person, um, journalist, merchant banker, and lawyer letters of politics. So I anticipate a focus on the economy. I'd anticipate a focus perhaps on actually saying to voters, well, the economy is actually slowing down, not doing that well, which the previous government tended to deny. And I'd guess perhaps an emphasis may be on a policy of tax cuts, perhaps seen as a way of stimulating the economy, but also perhaps as a way of putting the Labor Party under some pressure as to whether or not to um, support an agenda of tax cuts. So that's the kind of direction I anticipate him uh, moving down. Thank you very much for that, Dr. Robinson. Dr. Jeff Robinson from Deakin University in Australia. In Japan's capital, tens of thousands have rallied against a set of government-backed security bills. 935's Mubin Saadet has more. Last night, demonstrations took place in front of Parliament. Protesters broke through metal barriers after scuffling with police and streamed onto the streets. They're trying to stop the passage of the controversial legislation in the Diet's upper house this week and they've demanded Prime Minister Shinzo Abe quit. Mr Abe's legislation was rammed through the lower house by cabinet in July. It's currently under debate in the upper house and the ruling coalition is pressing for the legislation to be passed during parliament's current session. Should the legislation pass, it would allow Japan's self-defense forces to be deployed overseas in combat operations for the first time since the Second World War. Mubin Saadat reporting. North Korea has hinted at a possible satellite launch. This has fueled speculation that it might attempt to fire a long-range rocket to coincide with a key political anniversary next month. Any such launch would invite fresh international sanctions. It would also jeopardize a reunion of families divided by the 1950-53 to 53 Korean War. The North insists its rocket launches are intended to put peaceful satellites into orbit, while the U.S. and its allies see them as disguised ballistic missile tests. Malaysia's police chief says authorities will be keeping close tabs on a rally tomorrow that some fear may lead to ethnic clashes. Channel News Asia's Sumisha Naidu has more. It's a day meant to mark the formation of the Federation of Malaysia more than five decades ago. But some fear this year's Malaysia Day on September 16th will be used as a platform to promote racism. Last month, the Bursay 4 demonstration brought tens of thousands of Malaysians to the streets calling for institutional reform and the resignation of Prime Minister Najib Razak. But some 200 Malay groups say that rally was dominated by ethnic Chinese from the opposition Democratic Action Party, who they believe showed disrespect to Peninsula Malaysia's largest ethnic group. The Malay groups say they're now joining a counter-rally planned for Malaysia Day, one they hope will teach the Chinese a lesson. Malay solidarity aside, many, including those from Mr. Najib's party, Amno, say they're attending the rally to show support for the Prime Minister. Mr. Najib continues to be plagued by allegations of corruption despite his repeated denials. No charges have been brought against him so far. Now, a 2006 murder scandal he was linked to in the past has resurfaced. The Prime Minister says the recent current affairs program about the murder of the Mongolian translator Alvin Tuya is yet another step in the plot to oust him from government. Malaysia's police chief agrees. You are, you are trying to confuse the people. You are, you are trying to, to create some, something else from nothing. I'm sure you say that, like, that there is no Whatever it is, we are commencing our investigation on Alcatraz. You answer when it's possible. This isn't the first time Malaysia has linked the media to a plot to discredit Mr. Najib. In July, the Prime Minister threatened to sue the Wall Street Journal, and the government also blocked access to the Sarawak Report website after both news outlets published allegations that some 700 million US dollars had been channeled into his personal bank.